Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm heading over to see a friend of mine, Amy. I've known her for about 23 years now. She's having some sort of an electrical problem at her house, and I told her I would help her out. She is quite the character, as you're going to see. We're almost to her house, and we have arrived. Amy! Amy! Where you at? Hey, boy! Hey! Hey, Milo! Where are you? How you doing? <laughs> Hi! Oh my god, you're gonna kill my back! Now Milo's all jealous. <laughs> what is the issue now? What is the problem? Let's hear it. Another woman with problems. I only get phone calls when there's problems. I know, Dougie. And you always come. You're the best. So, here's the problem. Yeah. The number of shoes you have is a problem. You need that many? Nice. Real nice. Thank you. All right. What's the issue? Okay. So, you told I, me you have this steamer up there. I do. And it was put in years ago. Yeah. And the problem was it was undersized Correct. for the shower right over here, the shower right. area. So it would never now, where does the steam come out of in here? This little guy over here. Oh, the cube down here at the bottom? Yes. So there was never enough, it couldn't handle. Was there enough steam to do anything with? No, in fact. The Not even a facial? I couldn't even get a facial. Nice. In fact, if I sat on that, it was a little chilly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what happened? You had a new unit put in. So I had a new unit put in, and then it kept tripping the breaker. All right, so it's undersized wiring. I feel that the wire is too thin. Well, it definitely is. Yeah, it definitely so, is. All right, so what I need to do is get the ladder out. Let me go up there and take a look at the rating on the new unit, because you just had that put in, right? I did. All right, let me put the ladder there and take a look. Okay. And this is the steam unit right here. It's a Mr. Steam, and it says it requires 42 amps. So right now it's currently wired with a double pole 40 amp breaker, 240 volts. And you can see up here, this is where the power comes in through this armored cable. So I'm going to have to swap the wiring out that's inside this cable. More than likely this goes into the attic into a junction box. We'll have to go up in the attic and take a look at that. Nice unit, all stainless steel. And you can see there's a solenoid right here. Opens and closes the flow of water. Got a relief valve for temperature and pressure and a drain in case the unit leaks. Very nice. Okay, let's go in the garage and take a look at the breaker panel. The breaker is located in the left panel, not the one on the right. I know this is not good. You have the water tank in front of the panel. You're not supposed to block the front of the panels like that, but at least the door can open. I'm going to have her clear all this out of the way so I can work. Now, she told me it was a 40 amp breaker, and I just checked, and believe it or not, that heater, which is intended to have at least a 50 amp breaker, is only connected up to a double 20 breaker. So, Amy, how did you arrive at that being a 40 amp breaker? Dougie, very simple. This is 20, and this is 20. <laughs> Add it up. Are you serious? 40. It's really? all part of the same little square. Nice, real nice. What? 20 and 20. It's, it's still a 20. It's just 20 at 240. This is real, Dougie. The blonde hair? Yeah? Born blonde. <laughs> Okay, so now we know how she arrived at the 40 amps. So what we need to do now is open up this panel, and I'm going to remove that breaker, and I'm going to get ready to run a brand new line in the attic using 6.3 wire. It's going to be a 120, 240 volt line. We're going to have to run it into the attic and all the way across to the opposite side of the house. So let's get started. Okay, with the cover off, this is the breaker we're going to be popping out. This wire here and that wire there connect to this line going through the top of the panel. So I'm just going to disconnect these two, put wire nuts on them, tuck them off to the side, and I'm going to have to pop out one of the knockouts on top, a three-quarter inch knockout, so I can run a new line through. So let me disconnect this first. Now the heating unit is rated 42 amps. It's a resistive load, not an inductive load. 
So I could get by using a double 50 breaker, but instead I'm going to be using a double 60 along with a 6.3 Romex cable. So let me just pop this in position right now. It's, in, it's already off. Push that down. All right, it's a good connection. Now in case you're wondering, each one of these bus bars is 120 volts. This right here is your neutral. It's bonded to the panel. And that's where the ground wires are connected as well as the neutral wires. So if I connect this here and I touch to that, you can see 120 showing up. 120 and the two together gives you 240 volts. You can touch this, you can touch this, this, but you do not want to go anywhere near those bus bars. Over here you can see the white wire, which is the neutral. Then you have your two hot lines coming in. Some panels will have the neutral wire connected to one bar. It will not be bonded. This crossover bar will not be in position. And then you'll have a separate ground wire connected to this lug. The next thing I'm going to do is put some wire nuts on this, tuck it off to the side, and then we're going to take a look up top to see if I can find a three quarter inch knockout to remove. And here you can see the wires with the caps on them tucked off to the side. Now I'd like to explain a couple things. This panel here on the left has its own main disconnect outside and this one on the right also has another disconnect. Each one of these is 150 amps. That's a number one wire. And I just discovered something right here by looking carefully when I was doing this work. There is a ground wire here and I don't know why they didn't connect it to this lug. So what I'm going to do is disconnect this I'm going to connect it to this lug. I'm going to remove this crossover bar and then remove this bonding screw. Another important thing to note is that this is a sub panel and it only has a 60 amp breaker supplying power to that panel. You do not want to put the same rated breaker in the panel because what's going to happen if you put too much of a load on this breaker, it may trip the breaker in the main panel supplying power to the sub panel. So you always want to go 10 amps under. So a double 50 would be just fine if you had a 60 amp double feeding this panel. Let me take care of this grounding issue and we'll come right back. Okay, the power to this panel is now off. All right. All right. Now these two bars are no longer connected. And it's not necessary to put these screws back in, but I'll put them in anyway. Tighten them down. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is take out this bonding screw. And that's going to separate the neutral line from the panel itself, the ground right here. Now this is independent of the housing. Next thing I'm going to do, take off this ground wire right here. It's only a number 10, it's a little too small. Unfortunately, this wire is too short to reach up top. Now there's a good chance I could probably get away with using this wire if I just pull just a little bit, get it to clear this piece of plastic, and go underneath all these and into that lug. Let me give it a try. The ground wire, I was able to reach it around this point, connect it into that lug. I transferred the ground wires from the neutral bar over to this ground bar. And this neutral wire was weaved between here. It didn't look good. Move that over. Now there is one more thing I'd like to do. And you can see that this is not identified as hot. And the way to do that is to take black electrical tape and just wrap some right here. There, there, there. And then it will be identified as hot. I'm also going to take off this green piece of tape. Okay, and here you can see everything's been identified now with the black tape. This panel looks a hundred percent better from the mess that I saw when I God, opened it. Now it's beautiful. Now I can finally go on to doing the job that I was supposed to do, adding that 60 amp line. Let's take a look right up here. 
Now the knockout I'm going to remove is right up here. I'm going to pry it and then grab my needle nose and remove not only the center one but the other ring. I need the full three quarter inch knockout. Okay, you can see the knockout has been removed. And I'm going to be securing the cable, which I'll show you in a minute, with this Romex clamp. It's a three quarter inch clamp. In order to install this, I'm going to have to take out a little bit of the sheetrock right here, just straight across, so I can take the clamp and slide it in and drop it into that hole. Then I can drill a hole in the top plate of this wall and drop the Romex cable down into the clamp. Okay, you can see right up here the Romex clamp is installed, pushed it through that opening at the top. Later I'll patch that. Now I'm going to go into the attic and drill the hole to come down the wall. Alright, let's see this wonderful attic. Oh my god. This is a mess, an absolute mess. Wow, this is not nice. Alright, all loose fill insulation. Dougie. Yeah, thanks. Oh my god. This is not going to be a joy to get around. Let me go up here for a minute. You want me to come up and clean the boxes? <laughs> want me to come up and clean the boxes? <laughs> <laughs> you got to come up here and move all these boxes. Okay. Don't go through the ceiling. I don't need more work. Just throw them down. I'm going to move. Go. Tumble it. Nice. Yama. Send it down. Yama. Let me show you where I have to actually go to get the wire down the wall. You can see right down there, there's a hole, but the problem is there's insulation, so I won't have to be drilling through there, but I do have to put a plastic bushing around the wire once it's inserted into that plate. So let me see if I can shove the wire down and grab it in the panel. Okay, I slid the cable down the wall, and if you look to the right, you can see the cable. So I just have to reach around that with a coat hanger, gently pull up on the cable, and try and line it up inside that clamp. All right, push down more. Keep going. Push. We're in. Keep going. Push. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, stop. All right, as you can see, the cable is now inside the panel, the right length to connect to the breaker, the ground, and the neutral bar. So let me strip this cable and get ready to connect everything up. Okay, you can see the cable's been stripped. The red and black go to the 60 amp breaker. This will remain in the off position until I'm finished. The ground wire down and around to this bar here and the neutral straight down and into the neutral bar. Let me patch this hole, put the cover on, and then we're going to go into the attic. Here you can see the hole was patched at the top of the panel and the cover is back on. Okay, this is what it looks like in the attic. You can see where the cable comes through the top plate. You have that plastic bushing to prevent it from being cut, and there's a staple right over there. I'm going to have to secure the cable along the side of the truss for about seven or eight feet, and then I'm going to route it directly through the trusses all the way down to the other side of the house. Hopefully you can see all the way down there. Feed it in. Keep it coming, hold it. Keep it going. Watch out, there's a hi-hat. You're right up against the hallway hi-hat. So you get up to, there you go, there you go. I'm gonna have to take this wire and it's gonna have to go all the way down there. So let me get it into position. 
Keep it coming. Hold it. I'm going to go all the way down there. And there's wires running right through here. This is a mess like I've never seen. Look at this. God, horrible. Whoever did this. Is that all of it? All right. Okay, so we're looking good here. And now I gotta hope I have enough. Let's see. Can't step here because it's steel. All right, so now I'm over the bathroom. This is not fun, guys. Okay, guys, I see where it goes. All the way down here. And there it is, right there. They have the Romex wire going into the armor cable, and it's right up against the sharp edges. That's not good. I'm going to have to put some sort of a bushing there, pull out the old wire, and insert the new one. Okay, here's the armor cable that we saw in the attic, where they didn't have the end protected where the wire was going in. Got to take this off. Hopefully, easily, I hope. And is this ridiculous? Look at this right here. These skinny wires, I think they're 12 gauge, on these heavy wires going to this contactor. Absolutely ridiculous. What I'm going to do is disconnect this Romex, pull it through into the attic. I'm going to cap it off. It's no longer being used. Then I'm going to slide the 6.3 Romex into this armored cable and reconnect. I do need to find some sort of a plastic tube or bushing to go over that Romex cable before it's reinserted into the armor cable. Amy, do you have anything? <laughs> okay, you can see the wire's been pulled out, the ends have been taped off with caps, and you can see the armor cable. This one is slid inside, and there's a plastic tube inserted, so it cannot rub up against the sharp edges of the armor cable. Right over here it's stapled. And we're going to add more going down that way. Okay, you can see it's all complete now. I have the six gauge wires tied right in. This wire here is the neutral. I really did not need it for this heater, but I like to run the extra neutral in the event later on somebody wants to change out this unit and it requires three wire 220. Over here is where the ground wire went. Let's power it up. The circuit breaker is now on. You can see the power indicator, so let's give it a try. Okay, there it is, steaming away. So what do you think, Amy? I think it's fabulous. I think it's time for a happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> Open up the door, let's take a look. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come over here. Let's see. Good boy. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.